Hello, beautiful souls. This is Christy with Art of Awakening. Thanks so much for watching and just want to let you know I appreciate your being here and uh, spending time with me today. All right, so I was actually <laughs> kind of like not wanting to do a video today, even though I had told everybody I'm doing a video every day in April. And I just like today I woke up and I just like I don't want to do it. And I don't know if you've, I'm sure you can relate, like we've all had that experience where, you know, we just, just don't want to do something. And sometimes it's like, it's not that we don't like doing it. It's just like something in us just puts the brakes on. And sometimes it's things that we really do want to do, but there's, there's those brakes being put on, like what's up with that? So... So I spent some time today <laughs> um, avoiding making a video and I went to the Y and I went swimming and then I went and lifted some weights and then I went out to the woods and I sat for a long time and uh, it's a beautiful day. It's like the first day that we've had that's like really super beautiful spring day. So. You know, I went out to, the, it was funny because there were, there were all these cars in the parking lot. And, you know, when I got there, which usually isn't the case, it's like there's this trail that, you know, it, there usually are not huge amounts of cars, but today it was so beautiful, there were. Um, but everybody was going up the mountain and I went the other direction. And like, I saw, I briefly glimpsed one other person, like the whole time, it was awesome. So I had some time to sit there and just sort of be in nature, which was great. And, you know, at first it's like, oh, you know, I started doing all this meditation and stuff, and it was good. But then after a while, the guidance was like, just don't do anything. Like, don't meditate, don't pray, just, just sit. And I don't know if you are anything like me, but I find it hard to just sit. <laughs> It's not something that, uh, you know, I, I think it is something that comes naturally to, to most people, except that we have been so trained and programmed not, not to be natural that it becomes very, very hard to just be. Um, but it was a beautiful day, <laughs> and it actually felt really good to just sit. So after a while... I mean, it took a long time for my mind to stop fretting and to just relax and just enjoy. And then I realized, well, the sun's out. So I ended up just really taking a sun bath, which was beautiful. And I came home and I figured, you know, after I did all this that I would probably feel in the mood to do a video and I was wrong. I just didn't. And so I sat down and like asked spirit, just like, what the hell, what the heck is going on here? And it said, just doodle. And I just realized it's like, you know what? It's this whole, sometimes when we have blocks, it's just like we are in this whole perfectionism loop. And it's really kind of fear of failure. Um, so when I'm talking about spirit animals, I talk a lot about the superpowers. Um, because I, I like to think of the spirit animals each of having their own superpowers, and that's what helps them to survive. For instance, um, you know, the wolf can run tirelessly for hours and hours and hours, I mean, days on end. You know, it's a superpower. Um, you know, the, the bison will, 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 um, you know, gather around the young. And so it's got this protection, protective defense. It's a very, you know, got that defense instinct. That is sort of a superpower, I mean, if you think about it. You know, the defensive ability of a bison. So they all have superpowers. I just uploaded a, a video on uh, the Jesus bug, the water strider recently. And, you know, just to be able to walk on water, that's pretty amazing, superpower. Uh, but but the, the reason why, the reason why you know, it's important to, to 
the reason why it's why we're interested in this in, in the spirit animals is that they represent energies within ourselves and honestly each of us has superpowers too and you you know you've got multiple superpowers but one superpower that a lot of people don't even think of it as a superpower is the ability to make mistakes to f up right to really f up <laughs> and you know it doesn't feel like a superpower at the, t at the time when you do it but it's, it's not even so much the making mistakes it's the the willingness to make mistakes and I think that's where this is going because I, I am honestly just doodling with words as well as I'm doodling with um, with images here and this is just I'm just telling you kind of what spirits prompting me to talk about so the willingness to make mistakes because honestly that's part of the creative process and if you I mean we think of God as perfect and yeah God's perfect but look at the, the process the process of creation of evolution I mean you could look at things that don't make it as as mistakes right as failures there's there's been even before humans came on the scene there's been plenty of extinctions in the world you know um, happening and then new things coming forward and what seems to occur when there's a period of mass extinction is that life springs forward with amazing diversity and vitality after something like that happens and you know that that's occurred in history um, but it's also like you can see it um, you know anytime there's like like the volcano that went off um, I think it was Mount St. Helens way back when um, and it it really covered many 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 acres in ash and everything died pretty much not everything but um, but it looked like everything died it was just bleak and then scientists kept going back and just the amazing vitality that just kind of sprung out of that I mean everything the life just came back and it came back with a vengeance it was like it just was given this green light to just really blossom forth and, and, and that's what happens with creativity it's like creativity sometimes it, I think artists and scientists kind of do the same thing we push push the boundaries we push the boundaries we test we test things so what would happen if I do this what would happen if I do that and sometimes these ideas seem crazy sometimes they're things that and maybe everybody around you would be like that's crazy why would you do that but we get these you know bugs in our heads that oh we want to try it <laughs> and we go ahead and sometimes like it's a total disaster and and I think this is true of athletes sometimes um, you know and sometimes people who like I look at kids and sometimes kids the ones who get in trouble right sometimes they're the ones that are like the super creative ones and they're just trying they're just trying stuff and some of them don't make it and that's the thing it's like there's a risk there's always a risk but what's the bigger risk you know to die trying to, or did you know to die in the in the in the I'm not saying we should all die or, or jump off cliffs or anything I'm not saying that at all but but I think there's a there's a metaphorical death that can happen when we don't follow our gut right 
And, you know, what's worse, to die following your gut or to die not following your gut? Because what's going to happen <laughs> when, when, when that, you know, if you are a creative person, we all are at some level. And, and some of us feel just more compelled than others to follow the creative path. And I think it depends on, you know, the lifetime that you're in and so forth. But if you're one of those that's called, called forth to create something out of your life, and I'm not, you know, it doesn't have to be art. It, it, it can be anything. It could be just creating a beautiful life. Or a fascinating life whatever it is, or just learning, it's, you know, finding the truth. I think, honestly, I think, you know, what scientists do is they're seeking the truth, and, and same thing with artists of all sorts. Even, you know, artists of their own lives, we're all artists of our lives. We all have that capacity. Um, and so this idea of making mistakes, it's part of the process because you, you got to be willing to get out there and risk, risk failure. It's the only way, I mean, the only path to success is you know, by way of failure, honestly. Look at young children learning to walk. You know any one-year-olds? I mean, I know a one-year-old that just learned to walk. His name is Drew. He's really cute. Um, and, you know, some of them are more cautious than others. But they all do fall down. You know, and... Without falling down, they will never, ever learn to walk. What does a one-year-old do? You know, sometimes they cry a little bit, but, but a lot of times they laugh. They fall down, they laugh. But what happens when a toddler falls down and they look, they look to the mom or the dad, whoever's sitting there that they trust, They'll fall down, and the first thing they'll do, <laughs> a lot of them, I mean, unless it really hurts, if they really hurt themselves, they cry. But usually, what I've noticed is they'll fall down, and they won't necessarily react right away. They'll look to mom or dad and see what their reaction is. And if mom goes, oh, oh my God, then they'll cry. And if mom goes, you're okay, just get up, <laughs> you know, let's get you up and try again, then they do. And which toddler do you think is going to learn to walk <laughs> faster and with more sure steps, right, and learn to run? So this is something that we can do for ourselves. Is just be accepting, first of all, you know, um, just to recognize that, yeah, sometimes, sometimes risks are necessary and, and especially especially when we're facing blocks when we're facing those like that feeling of I can't do this or I just don't freaking want to even though you know that it's something you need to do and we all have that spiritually right I don't want to do that <laughs> um, a couple weeks ago, I, I just kept getting this guidance to go in the swimming pool, go in the pool, just just get get yourself in the pool, go swimming. And I was like, no, I don't want to do it. I just don't want to. Because <laughs> I have a Y membership and it's wonderful. And, and it was like, you know, there's chlorine in there and there's all sorts of screeching kids and they have this rain tree going times and it's really noisy and blah 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 I had all these excuses and finally spirit was like just get in the pool just get in the pool so I did got in the pool and even though it was like Sunday afternoon and it was crowded and there were screeching kids and you know everything but it felt amazing I hadn't been swimming in a long time 
and it was really exactly what I needed. It was really healing. Um, I've been kind of dealing with some physical issues and it was incredibly healing. So I've been swimming regularly <laughs> ever since. Um, but it was sort of like that, that resistance sometimes and taking the risk. So like I said, this is a complete doodle, <laughs> including everything I'm saying. So, oh, anyway, yeah, where was I getting to? Um, so I, I apologize if this is disjointed. So this is a risk I'm taking to <laughs> make an incredibly disjointed video. <laughs> But I would love to hear your comments on that, if, if that rings true, you know, if there's anything I'm saying rings true for you. I would love to hear it, or if it doesn't, if, you're, if, you, if you, honestly, if you, if you're seeing this and think, oh, this is the most stupid video I've ever seen, I, <laughs> give me that feedback too, I would love to see it. <laughs> I'd probably laugh at it, but, um, anyway. So yeah, the, the, the creative risk taking. And, and by creative, I mean, we are all creating our lives. We are the creators of our lives. And I think it's even not so much, I mean, sometimes it's like, yeah, we have to decide to take a risk, but other times the risk just comes to us, right? We just get in situations where we have to react or, you know, do something. And sometimes we mess up. And, you know, it's really all about how do we react to that, react to that failure. I mean, do we, we take that little inner child of ourselves and go, oh no. Oh no, you fell down, it was horrible. <laughs> right? And then what we do, we, 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 we get afraid next time, right? If we do that. And I think sometimes that's what holds us back and it makes it very difficult to move forward when we know we need to is because we've got that, whatever it is, you know, that experience of believing that messing up was a bad thing or, or painful? Or can we be the mom or dad that says, hey, you're okay. You fell down. <laughs> you fell down. It's all right. You can pick yourself up. If we can be that. If we can be that kind of mom or dad to ourselves. You know, we're going to be ready to go right next time. So, anyway. Anyway, like I said, I'm just kind of having fun with this. And, and this is something that I think has a lot to do with play. Because when I, when I teach watercolor, a lot of times what I find is people are afraid to play. And, and, and really, art is play. It's about play. It's about just... You know, that's why I say what art and science are very similar. It's kind of a, it's an experimentation. Each one, even if you know what you're doing, even if you're doing something that, you know, that even a master painter that's set up a still life or something, and then, that there's still, every stroke is an experiment. Every stroke, especially with watercolor, because, like, you never know how the water exactly is going to go. You cannot completely plan watercolor, which is why I love this medium so much because it's always a surprise and it's always a co-creation with the medium. And, and, and that's true, 
you know, regardless, like, you know, in life as well, it's always a co-creation because we cannot control every last little thing. And again, that is part of the risk as well. So this looks like some little stream, <laughs> stream and a tree. It looks like springtime to me. I'm going to put a little foam line of leaves, leafy things in here. Get a bigger brush. I mean, this is a really tiny piece because, like I said, I was like sort of trying to get through this block. And so when Spirit told me to doodle, and it was sort of like, you know, don't, don't make a big deal out of it. It can be really small. It can be really small. And that is sometimes a good way to get out of blocks. It's just, just one little baby step. Like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's enough. Sometimes it's a big risk just to get out of bed for some people, right? Or for some of us some of the time. Sometimes it's just like, okay, get dressed on some clothes <laughs> and if that's where you're at right now that's fine risk it give yourself a good <laughs> you know give yourself a cookie for it if you manage to get out of bed maybe not a cookie maybe like a nice <laughs> bowl of raspberries or something or a cookie whatever it's a chocolate it's almost easter after all but Okay, so anyway, I think this is probably long enough. I'll let you get back to whatever you were doing. Get outside and have some fun in the sun. And I think I might go out there again pretty soon, too. So, um, anyway, thank you for sticking with me, if you stuck with me this long. I hope it has been helpful to you. And... Thank you for your likes and your subscribes, and thank you very much to uh, everybody who has purchased uh, my decks and, um, and or uh, purchased a session. Uh, the links to those are below if you're interested, and you have a lovely day. I'll catch you again tomorrow.